Hey everyone, welcome back. Today I'm gonna show you my complete, full, long as hell skin prep and foundation routine. This is not for your everyday because this routine is long. But if you have some important thing you wanna go to or if you just feel like spending a lot of time on your makeup that day, this is the routine I would go for because it guarantees that my skin, no matter what condition it's in, looks perfect by the end no matter what. It uses very little makeup but it's a long blending and application process. And for me really it's all about technique and how much time you're willing to splint, splint, spend blending. So I'm gonna show you everything from start to finish. So yeah, just keep watching if you wanna see how I faked, dewy, glowy, flawless skin. So we're starting off with a fresh face. I literally just stepped out of the shower and did my skincare routine, hence why my hair is still a little bit wet. Skin is relatively good, but I still have a bunch of skin issues. My under eye circles is just chronically dark no matter what. And I've got some acne scars on here. I don't know if you can see. I'm just gonna zoom you in. I'm just gonna zoom you in a little bit. I have a lot of veins and acne scars around here I, and I'm pretty red around the nose as well. But there are some things that you can do that are like last minute, you know, Hail Mary things to make your skin look as good as possible before you put on makeup. So when I was in the shower and cleansing my face, the first thing that I did was cleanse with a facial brush. Even though this is part of my regular routine, I especially do this before I put on makeup, like when I want my skin to look really good because it gets rid of any last minute texture problems like dry patches or if you have any remaining oil and dirt on your face. The one that I use is from Vanity Planet because it's affordable and because it's gentle and it works. But there are a lot of facial brushes on the market. You don't have to use this one. If you already have one, don't bother buying a new one. But if you want one, I have a discount code in the description. So after that, I like to put on BHA, even though this is also in my regular skincare routine. I especially use this before I put on makeup. It calms any like last minute redness that you have. It calms your acne if you have like a huge pimple like before prom or something. It makes your skin glow, it makes it healthier, it controls oil, it helps with your blackheads. So I just put a little bit of it in my palms and pat it all over my face. By the way, I did all this off camera because if I did all this on camera, this video will be a million years long. I feel like I've been talking about these two products forever because I've been using it for a long time and these two are like the products that I literally cannot live without. I also want to say that I'll be doing a giveaway on this exfoliant next week. I'll be giving 10 away plus I'll be doing a giveaway on an entire skincare routine for one person. So this would include cleanser, toner, exfoliant, daytime moisturizer, nighttime moisturizer, and a mask. And all you need to do to enter is to follow me on Popsy and watch my skincare live stream for further instructions. My username will be here. I've given this away before because I just think it's a cure-all for any kind of skin problem. It's the thing that completely cleared up my forehead. Again, this video is not sponsored. I just really like this product. For lip care, I've been using By Terry's Balm de Rose. It's literally the thickest lip product I have ever used. I think it's won some awards before because it's a really, really good lip product. I'm just gonna put a little bit more on. You can put this on the night before and the next morning you will still feel the hydration. So I'm really liking it. It's a little bit expensive, but it's thicker than any of the Glossier Balm.coms or Vaseline or anything that I've tried. So if you have especially dry lips, this is what I would recommend. So after your skin is prepped, the first thing that I do is put on a smoothing primer. The one that I've been using is the Resist Smoothing Primer primer serum. If it is daytime, I would use an SPF moisturizer underneath this primer. Since it's nighttime now, it doesn't really matter, so I'm just going to use this primer. This is a really good choice if you have combination or dry skin because it's a really serum-y kind of primer. But if you have oily skin, there's another one that I like to use on my oilier days. I thought I lost it for a second, but this is the Paul's Choice Shine Stopper. Unlike a lot of primers on the market, this actually doesn't have any alcohol or fragrance to control oil. So this is a primer that's good for your skin and it helps mattify any shine you have really, really well. So I'm just gonna put the smoothing primer all over my face. If my face gets red, don't be alarmed. It's not the product. It's just every time I touch my face, it just gets red. So as you can see, it's just added a little bit of luminosity. Before I put on foundation, I'm just gonna tie my hair up so the foundation doesn't get in my hair. So this foundation, which is my all-time favorite foundation, is the NARS Sheer Glow, and I've talked about this a lot. Even if you have a lot of things to conceal, it's best to go for a medium coverage foundation and to not apply too much because the purpose of foundation is to even out your skin tone. So if you have a lot to conceal, just use a lot of concealer, but don't go too heavy on the foundation or else the texture of your skin will look cakey which will make all of your acne or anything look worse. I have a big face so I'm using quite a lot. I think this is such a scam like I have such a huge face and I feel like I go through products so much faster than everyone else and then I'm blending it in with a clean beauty sponge. This is the one from Eco Tools, but you can really use anyone that you like. 
So I like to use the flat area of this to do the side of my face because it does a large surface area and again, I have a big face. And I like to use a foundation that's more yellow tone to balance out my redness. After I blend in my whole face, I like to use whatever is left on here and just stamp it on my eyes because I don't like to put a huge amount of foundation on my eyes but I also want to hide some of the initial redness my favorite concealer is the Tarte Shape Tape no matter if it's for under eyes or for blemishes, it does it all so I'm just going to apply a little bit of this on some of the acne scars that I have around the nose right here and I have an active acne right there so I'm going to just do a little dot I'm gonna do my dark circles later so the way that you blend your concealer will make or break how your concealer looks I would not suggest using a beauty blender if you want to hide and actually conceal a blemish because it shears out the coverage so the thing I like to use is a flat top brush like this it's like the flat top brushes you use for foundation except it's really tiny and this is really affordable it came in like one whole set of brushes which costs I think about $10 on Amazon the cool thing about flat top brushes is it doesn't really take away the coverage because it doesn't absorb a lot of product so I'm going to show you how I blend these so I like to start off with the edges of where I put the concealer and you really just stamp it on there and if you don't have a brush you can always use your fingers because your fingers don't absorb product either so it gives a similar effect but this one is just a lot faster so as you can see that whole blemish there is gone I'm just going to do the rest of them just kind of slowly stamping them away and I'm gonna do my nose as well and this concealer is also a little bit on the yellower side which really helps with any redness around my nose now on the acne I'm just gonna use the same method but I'm gonna be a little careful it's so annoying that is close to my hairline as well it's okay to use a circular motion if you're far away from the blemish and you're just trying to blend out you know the concealer to the foundation but around the blemish I would always use a stamping motion so next is under eye concealer and I like to use a lot less because I think the goal is not to completely hide your skin but just to enhance it at least for me that's just the look that I prefer so instead of putting the concealer right under my lower lash line I like to dot the concealer <laughs> I don't know if you heard that but that was my stomach rumbling I'm so hungry I like to dot it right here where the line of my under eye circle is so if I can hide that line then any darkness like around here will look like a natural shadow like underneath my eyes rather than like a skin problem I'm also gonna put a little bit here you see where this line is where my under eye circle starts that's where you want to place the concealer stamp it on there and since this area is kind of red I'm gonna put a few dots right here as well I think I'm just allergic to something which is why they're chronically red <laughs> I just realized how silly I look so now you want to do the same thing just stamp and just buff in the concealer when you're blending it's okay to bring it up a little to where your lower lash line is but just don't place a heavy amount of concealer there or else it'll look crazy and usually even that is too much concealer for me so I would use the beauty blender to sheer it out so as you can see my under eye circle is almost completely gone even though I didn't use a lot of product if you look closely there is still a little bit of shadow there but I think that's natural and I don't think we should try to eradicate any kind of signs of real skin from your face if you look at pictures of celebrities on the red carpet even they show some kind of dark circle underneath their foundation they just don't put on layers and layers of thick concealer to hide their circles because it's okay to have dark circles sometimes so this is one I've done and you can see how much brighter it looks without being too heavy so as a last step before I put on powder I like to use the beauty blender which still has a little bit of that foundation residue on here just to make everything cohesive and blended after I apply foundation I like to do my brows before I powder my face just so I can give it a moment to really set so I can minimize the amount of powder I use afterwards and that's a tip that I got from Charlotte Tilbury so while we're waiting I'm just going to do my brows and brush through any kind of foundation in my brows 
I'm gonna skip through this part just to not make this video a million years long But I have a full brow routine on my channel that you can look at so now my brows are done and I'm still pretty oily I'm gonna use the RCMA no color powder put a little bit of it in my palms and use a big fluffy face brush well, it doesn't have to be big, but it has to be fluffy because the fluffier it is, the less product it picks up and you want to have more control with how much powder you put on your face. So I'm just going to dip a little bit, tap it off. So I'm just going to slowly pat this on my forehead. I don't know if you can tell, but it already took off a lot of the excess shine but even in areas where it mattifies it's not completely like dead matte your skin still looks like skin which is what i like about this powder i'm applying powder strategically because i have combination skin so i don't necessarily need powder everywhere you can use any small brush that you like and i'm going to be setting my under eye concealer with this again the reason why i'm using a smaller brush is just so that this mattifying powder doesn't get on this area of the cheekbone which i want to highlight so next is bronzer you can probably guess that i don't like super heavy contouring but i do like to warm up my face a little bit so the bronzer that i'm using is called art class by too cool for school you don't have to use this one but you want to choose a bronzer that matches the undertones of your skin this one is almost completely matte i'm using my fanny planet brush which it's from the palette and i'm picking up a little bit of product and literally just stamping it right here you can slightly like move it to buff it in which makes it look a lot more seamless just be mindful and don't overdo the bronzer to the point where your foundation just looks completely out of place i like to do this on my jawline as well and a little bit on my forehead what i like to do is to sweep a little bit of bronzer right on my nose just to shorten my nose and to make it look a little bit more curved than it is and i also like to use a very fluffy eyeshadow brush to just contour my nose now after that even though you have powder on top and everything you can still use your beauty blender blend out the bronzer even more to make everything look completely seamless i know this is like a hundred step routine but it really just makes your skin look completely flawless glowing it looks good on instagram and in real life so now i've blended in all of the powder bronzer and contouring with a beauty blender this is not a beauty blender this is the blender from eco tools i don't know why i keep calling this the beauty blender i'm going to use a blush now the choice of blush really really depends on your skin color for example my skin would never look good with a really deep pink blush recently i've been using this Givenchy prismi blush I think this is in the color 04 it's called right that's cool because i'm always right and this blush literally fits my face better than any blush i have ever used it has a soft pale pink kind of color and a soft peachy color so it looks really pretty on my skin and again i like to use a fluffier brush to apply this so i'm not using the one here and i'm just again stamping it on and i like to layer this kind of on top of the bronzer so your face looks sun-kissed like after you've been out in the sun you don't just look bronze you look a teeny tiny bit of sunburn as well so that's what i'm going for last but not least i have to use this like i just have to the new highlighter from signature by sarah and this is called spotlight you've probably already seen me post about this on instagram snapchat everywhere it's a highlighter that's about to come out in june and i'm just gonna say i am completely biased of course because this is the perfect formula and i'm willing to put my name on it so of course i'll be completely 100 percent behind it this is a triple milled formula that gives you amazing luminosity whether you want it to be super subtle or very intense it's buildable it's a very creamy powder because i wasn't sure if i wanted a cream or a powder i knew i wanted the lasting power of a powder but also have the blendability of a cream so this is a very creamy powder so i'm gonna use the butt of the blender and just you know bounce that ass <laughs> on the highlighter and just dab it on the cheeks i'm going for a very natural glow like you were sweating so i didn't apply very much and this is what it looks like by the way this is in the color strobe light I'm just gonna do the same on the other side 
and you don't have to add more if you're not into that oily look but i am so i'm gonna apply a bit here as well on the tip of my nose and my nose bridge if you want your skin to look beautiful and flawless all day you can use a makeup spray there's this new one that i've been trying it's from kate somerville i have not been liking it very much it has spf in it and it sets makeup so on paper i'm supposed to be in love with it but unfortunately i wasn't able to review the ingredient list before i bought it because it wasn't on the website i didn't know that the first ingredient here was alcohol which is really just really sad because i thought this was going to be a great combination of skincare and makeup but anyway i won't be using this today i just want to let you know that i tried it instead i'll be using the skindinavia makeup finishing spray which is always my go-to if i literally want my face to look flawless so I just went and put on a little bit of mascara, but this is the finished look. I think it looks just dewy enough to look youthful, but not too dewy that it looks oily. It's matte in areas that you want it to be matte. And the most important thing is it doesn't look cakey. It looks like your skin. And because it looks so natural, this is something that you can wear like on a day-to-day -day if you want to put in the effort and the time. And it looks so flawless that you can wear it for like a big event like prom or something i just want to like zoom in not zoom in lean forward to let you see my skin still looks real the texture still looks good it's just a better version of your skin and even if you don't have perfect skin i think everybody can find you know a better version of your skin if you found this video helpful please let me know by liking the video and subscribe if you haven't yet i'm so close to 80k please help me get there let me know if you have any questions about the product if you're new here if you want to follow me on other forms of social media all that is going to be in the description box thanks again for watching and i love you love you <laughs>